Welcome to the VB Toolbox. In this video we'll be using the try-catch method of trapping errors and exceptions in our application and uh, hopefully keeping it from crashing on us. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll create a new project and you can name that project whatever you like. Click OK. Alright, now that our template has been generated, we can begin coding this. I'm going to start by adding a few basic controls to the form. So we're going to grab a couple items from our toolbox here. If your toolbox is not visible, you can uh, click your view menu to find that and make it visible. Let's add a button and a label. and a text box. And once we have these, we can kind of just copy and paste more as we need them. Probably don't need it that big. And I'm just going to line these up just like that. What we'll be doing is creating an array. You can use a combo box or anything that you want. and with that list or array, um, we're going to cycle through the values or use this as an index pointer and select various records from that array and we'll generate an error by selecting an index that is outside of the array bounds or you know for an item that does not exist in our array. So um, let's go ahead and just change this label text, ca uh, the caption text to, um, just change that to index, and that's in your properties dialog on the right. And now let's grab our um, text box here, and I'm just going to set a property in here of, uh, I want to set the text align to center. That'll just center the text in the middle of our box. And for our command button, let's change the caption text on that to show item. And we can change the name of that uh, to uh, just CMD show or whatever. Whatever you want. Um, one more thing. Let's change the, the name of this text box to txt index so it's easily referenced. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and copy. If you drag your mouse on your form, you can cut, uh, highlight both of these items here and then press Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. And then we don't have to redo those steps. I'm going to take this text box and drag it out a little bit. And I'm going to change this label now, change the text property to list item. And finally, oh, actually, let's rename this as well. I'm going to just call this uh, text box txt value. And now, finally, we need an error output to capture our errors, too. And we won't be using this immediately, but I will be showing you how here in a moment. And let's make this one multi-line. And we can just call the, we can name that text box txt error. And go down to the multi-line property and set that to true. Let's just stretch that down a little bit. And I will change the label text to be error. All right. Now that our form is ready to use, let's go ahead and double click on that form to generate a form load event. And we're going to start up here in our uh, Form 1 class. Um, 
by creating a class variable here. I'm just going to say dim my list has a new list of string. Okay, so what we've just done is generated a string array or list essentially that we can store, you know, strings to. And with our form load, let's go ahead and add some items to our array or our list. So I'll say my list dot add. <clears throat> and here we can add a few strings. I'm just going to add cat and just copy that line and you can paste that a few times. Add as many items as you like. Dog horse. All right. So like most arrays in Visual Basic, this is zero based. So if you think of these in terms of their index values, you're going to have zero, one, and two. So three items is going to go up to two from zero. And we're going to be calling these by their index position and returning them to our list item box. But what happens if we try calling one that's outside of um, that the array indexes uh, say what if we called a uh, four index position of four it doesn't exist and so it should throw an error when we try to call that so let's go ahead and go back to our main form and we'll double click our show item button and that'll generate a click event for our button and here what we'll do is say <clears throat> excuse me txt value dot text setting the text property of our text box equal to um, my list and we want to grab <clears throat> excuse me we want to grab the index value that we supply from our index box here so if we put in 0 it should show us the first index if we put in 1 it should show us the second index and so on so to do this we want to convert or cast whatever text is in this box as a number or an integer specifically. So what I'm going to use is the C int. <clears throat> and then we'll just put txt index dot text. So any text that is in that box will be converted into um, a number value if it can be. Otherwise it should return an error. So if we put the letter T in there, it would probably uh, not like that very much. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, just try running this. And uh, we should be able to punch in a number like 1. Hit show item. And look at that. It puts in uh, item number 1. So we grabbed the index value from our array and returned the string value that was in there. So let's make this thing crash. I'm going to say 5. Hit show item. Oh, it didn't like that. See, index was out of range. Must be a non-negative and less than the size of the collection. The size being 2, right? 0 to 2. Um, so what if we don't want our application to crash? What if we want to return the error but we don't want to crash the application? Let's do this. We'll say try. If you hit enter it'll generate the entire exception for us or the entire statement. And now we can move our expression down into that statement. I'm just gonna cut it and paste it in there. And uh, now let's see what happens when we cause it to crash. Let's try two. Oh, it's horse. Let's try three. Uh-oh, that's outside of the array. Not, notice that nothing happened. It didn't crash our application because it uh, caught it gracefully in our try-catch. So, um, but we d really don't know exactly what happened. Why, you know, if you're running an application, you kind of might, you know, want to know why it's not working. How come I can't go to three? So, 
we can use the catch to output the information from our error or exception that was caught. So what I can do is I can say txt error dot text equals ex as the exception. So I'm going to use ex dot message. Now if I run this, <clears throat> I should be able to punch in an index value here. That works. Let's go to 3. I want to know why 3 won't work. Oh, look at that. So instead of just bombing our application, it reports the error to us. Um, tells us that the index was outside of the range. Or, yeah, it was out of the range, so, uh, you know. But it was captured. Everything's good. Try 5. Oh, same thing. Didn't like that. Um, what happens if we use the letter T? Ooh, conversion from string to type integer was not valid. So it tried, <clears throat> right here, it tried converting that letter T into a number and failed. And that would have crashed our application, but we caught it. So you can use this for uh, a number of things, and it's a great way to, to handle errors in a graceful manner and keep your application from crashing on you. So um, it's a wonderful tool to use in you know many different situations. I use it also for grabbing database records. Um, if I try querying something that isn't there, I want to know you know what happened, why it didn't return any results. So there's a number of different things you can use here or use this for. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Um, if you think anybody else will find this video useful, please share it with them. I appreciate you coming along. Thank you. Bye-bye.